Back in the days, anyone with an exaggerated physical disability who couldn't work a normal job would usually join the circus or the freak show circuit. Did you try that gag I told you about? Join us as we look at 20 circus freaks that actually existed. 20. Charles Sherwood Stratton, General Tom Thumb. In 1838, Charles Sherwood Stratton was born. When he was six months old, he stopped growing. Stratton had grown to a height of 2 feet 8.5 inches by his 18th birthday. At the age of five, he began touring with P.T. Barnum as General Tom Thumb, garnering fame and money that subsequently permitted him a sumptuous lifestyle and business relationship with Barnum. Tom Thumb died of a stroke in 1883 at the age of 45, six months after narrowly escaping a terrible hotel fire at Milwaukee's Newhall House, which killed 71 people. He was 3.35 feet tall and weighed 71 pounds at his peak. 19. Josephine Myrtle Corbin, the four-legged girl. Josephine Myrtle Corbin, who was born on May 12, 1868, had a rare body condition known as dipigus. Doctors who examined her confirmed she was a regular girl. Her father, William Corbin, was 25 years old at the time of her birth, and her mother, Nancy Corbin, was 34. The couple had four physically normal sons and four daughters. Josephine's condition could have been considered a bad omen in African tradition and would have been most likely thrown into a forest for wild animals to feast on. Her family, on the other hand, treated her as they did her normal blood siblings. Josephine Corbin debuted on the sideshow circuit at the age of 13 as the four-legged girl from Texas. One of her early promotional pamphlets described her as happy all day and gentle as summer sunshine. She rose to prominence in an industry where other performers cheated by wearing four-legged gaffes. 18. Fanny Mills, the Bigfoot Lady. Fanny Mills, who was born with a rare disease that caused her legs and feet to grow to enormous proportions, drew large crowds as the Ohio Bigfoot Girl throughout the 1880s. Mills, also known as Ohio Bigfoot Girl, had a condition that caused her feet to grow to incredible proportions. Mills set out to profit from her condition from 1885 to 1887. She performed in dime museums all over the East Coast, which featured oddities like two-headed calves. People flocked to see her. As a result, Mills could earn up to $4,000 per week at times. 17. Felix Wuerl, the Elastic Skin Man. Felix Wuerl was born in Mount Ida, Wisconsin, and discovered as a child that he had the unsettling ability to stretch and tug his skin like taffy. He put those skills to use on the Dime Museum circuit, as well as with circus sideshows such as the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. The Rubber Man, James Morris, was his main rival in the field. It has since been assumed that Wuerl had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a major symptom of weak connective tissue, resulting in skin that stretches like elastic and extremely loose joints. Wuerl was living in Laredo, Texas, when he died in 1933. 16. Annie Jones Bearded Woman Bearded women have been a sideshow staple since the dawn of time, frequently appearing at the top of any list of circus freaks. And Annie Jones, the bearded lady of P.T. Barnum's Greatest Show on Earth, was one of history's most successful bearded lady. It's still unclear what caused Annie Jones's condition, but it was most likely her suitism, a condition that causes coarse hairs in females in a male-like distribution and is thought to affect 5 to 10% of women. She died of tuberculosis at the age of 37 while visiting her mother, having known no other life than that of a freak. 15. Susie the Elephant Girl Susie the Elephant Skin Girl was born with ichthyosis, a painful condition that caused her skin to thicken, turn gray, wrinkle, and break out into cracks that were prone to infection. Susie was subjected to ridicule and segregation from her peers, which caused her emotional pain in addition to physical pain. During the hot summer days, while the other kids played in the water, Susie rubbed ice on her arms to stay cool because her skin condition prevented her from sweating. She would not cry as the children pointed and laughed at her because her condition had also taken away that ability. Susie first visited the United States in 1927 as part of a troupe that included a giantess and a bearded lady, and she returned several times thereafter. She emigrated to the United States from Germany with her manager to escape the impending war and settled in an apartment on New York's west side. Susie frequently exhibited herself at Hubert's Museum on 42nd Street in Coney Island in the 1930s while living in New York. In 1967, she even worked at Madison Square Garden for the Ringling Brothers and Sisters show. Susie was described as a shy, introverted, and quiet woman who preferred to maintain a low profile and exhibit sparingly. She exhibited herself mostly locally until her manager died in the late 1960s. Susie's career and passion for the business died with him, 
Her most recent confirmed public appearance was as a single attraction billed as the Swamp Girl at the Great Allentown Fair in Pennsylvania. 14. Julia Pastrana, a monster. Julia Pastrana took the stage at Broadway's Gothic Hall in Manhattan in December 1854. Pastrana, dressed in crimson, captivated the audience by singing and dancing. Children paid 15 cents and adults paid a quarter to view the baboon lady. George C. D. Odell, the show's theater chronicler, described Pastrana as a wonderful semi-human being and a cross between a woman and an orangutan. He saw that she, or it, was intelligent, had a lovely voice, and could speak three languages. Julia Pastrana, billed as the missing link between ape and man, was examined by various doctors who issued certificates, which were posted wherever Pastrana went on tour, claiming that she was not a woman at all, but rather a new species of half-human, half-ape hybrid. Pastrana's death did not liberate her from public scrutiny. Her body was displayed all throughout Europe for decades before it was eventually stored in Norway. Pastrana's narrative, on the other hand, was never forgotten. 13. Robert Huddleston Pony Man For many years, the world knew Robert Huddleston only as the Pony Boy, and through the incredible images depicting his unusual posture. His true name and story were nearly lost to history after years of traveling with carnivals as a human exhibit, and his story of personal triumph and perseverance has only recently resurfaced. Like Ella Harper, the Camel Girl, Robert Huddleston was likely afflicted with a very advanced form of congenital genu recurvatum, also known as back knee deformity. According to most accounts, Robert was unable to to stand upright or use crutches, so he lived and traveled on all fours. Despite what appeared to be a crippling illness, Huddleston led a remarkably active life and had an exceptional work ethic. Huddleston spent his early adulthood as a logging teamster, hauling trees and lumber 15 miles per day while attached to a wagon. Robert was a kind-hearted and hard-working man who ignored his perceived limitations, according to those who knew him. Most people didn't notice his physical condition because it was never an issue. Strangers stared and work became scarce after World War II, so Huddleston considered displaying his physical appearance and extraordinary independence for profit. Following the war, Huddleston became known as the Pony Boy while showcasing his physical uniqueness for the first time with a small carnival in Texas. The brief stint was extremely successful, thanks in part to his exceptional work ethic and led to additional work with several larger organizations. Huddleston eventually toured North America with the Tom Mix Circus. His act was primarily comprised of displays of strength combined with unusual flexibility. Huddleston demonstrated his exceptionality for profit for 36 years. He eventually retired to Fremont, where he maintained an active lifestyle by restoring automobiles and raising rabbits. He died in 1970, having lived his life to the fullest. 12. Frank Lentini, The Three-Legged Man Francesco Lentini was born in Rosalino, Italy, on May 18, 1881, into a family of 12 other children, with a third full-sized leg extending from the right side of his body. He was relocated to the United States at the age of eight, where he later appeared as the Great Lentini in several circus and carnival sideshows, including P.T. Barnum, Ringling Brothers, and Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. When deformities and disfigurements began to be considered as objects of public attention and enjoyment during English summer fairs, entertainment acts such as The Great Lentini became popular. Despite the unconventionality of his job, Frank Lentini's life is a historic immigrant success tale. 11. Isaac Sprague, The Living Skeleton Isaac Sprague endured a life of exploitation in P.T. Barnum's Museum of Human Curiosities after developing a mysterious condition that caused his weight to drop to skeletal levels. The Living Skeleton was one of the most popular traditional sideshow acts. An impossibly thin performer, born with a rare genetic disorder or who purposefully kept their weight dangerously low, would be shown to audiences to frighten, titillate, and provide a source of income for those with few options. Isaac W. Sprague was the most well-known of these. Isaac Sprague made his mark on sideshow history as the original Living Skeleton after a string of appearances in carnivals in his native Massachusetts. But Sprague's life story offstage was tragic. Sprague continued to appear as a regular feature in the American Museum until the museum burned down in 1868 and Sprague narrowly escaped with his life. 10. Chang and Eng Bunker, the Siamese twins. Chun and In were born in Siam, now Thailand, in 1811, with a four-inch band of flesh connecting them at the chest. Chang and Eng, as they became known in the West, left Siam as teenagers to pursue a career displaying their physical abnormality. For more than a decade, the Siamese twins performed in front of royalty and public audiences throughout Europe and the Americas. By the 1830s, 
Chang and Aang had become household names, so well known that future conjoined twins would be dubbed Siamese twins. They are relevant in current discussions of the 19th century South as Asian immigrants to the southern United States, enslavers, showmen, and human curiosities. 9. Prince Randian, the Human Snake Prince Randian could roll cigarettes, light them, and even shave his face with just his mouth. He was known as the Snake Man, the Human Torso, and the Human Caterpillar. Whatever he went by when the curtain rose and the spotlight landed on Prince Randian, there was no doubt that the crowd was taken aback by what they saw. Prince Randian, who was only three feet tall, was a startling sight. His arms were nothing more than nubs that stopped at his shoulders. He looked more like a caterpillar than a man in his one-piece red and white striped costume. P.T. Barnum, his sideshow employer, took advantage of this. Throughout his sideshow career, he wiggled around the stage and performed tricks with only his mouth. Randian died of a heart attack on December 19, 1934, barely hours after giving his final performance after more than 40 years of performing. 8. Ella Harper, the Camel Girl Ella Harper was born in Hendersonville, Tennessee, shortly after the Civil War, with an unusual disease that caused her legs to bend backwards, which turned her into a spectacle. W.H. Harris, an ambitious showman, was anxious to have the most diverse roster of freaks possible, and upon hearing of Harper, offered her a hefty payment to sign with her. Ella Harper earned $200 a week as a featured attraction in Harris's Nickel Plate Circus, which is roughly $5,000 today. Aside from the obnoxious term camel girl, Harper was also shoved on stage with a real camel, and paying viewers were encouraged to marvel at the similarities. Harper was adamant about quitting, and ultimately, after a year's worth of weekly $200 payments, she did. Ella Harper's post-circus activities are unknown, but it is thought that she pursued education and returned to her native home immediately after quitting the freak show circuit, when father died in a house fire in 1890, and Harper's brother Willie died roughly five years later. 7. Johnny Eck, the Half-Human Eck was not born cut off at the waist, but he did have small, non-functioning legs which he tied close to his body using a customized apparatus. Born with a fraternal sibling named Robert, who was completely formed and resembled him, the two performed a notorious trick in Raja Raboyd's magic show in 1937. Raboyd would pretend to cut Robert in half, and Johnny would emerge from the box with his legs severed. He was known as the Half Man and worked for Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey, Ripley's Believe It or Not. He then returned to his birthplace of Baltimore, where he shared a house with his brother Robert. In his later years, he focused on his hobbies of screen painting and putting on plays for the neighborhood kids. 6. Alice Elizabeth Doherty, the Minnesota Woolly Girl Alice Elizabeth Doherty, sometimes known as the Minnesota Woolly Girl, is the only recorded American born with hypertrichosis lanuginos, an extremely rare and odd condition. Alice Doherty began her exhibition career at the age of two, on a local level, demand quickly required larger Midwest excursions. According to all accounts, Alice was a bright and active child. By the age of five, the hair on her face was longer than five inches, and by her early teens, it was closer to nine inches long. Alice was always a standalone installation, on display for long periods of time in what was known as a storefront exhibition. She was content to retire in financial comfort in Dallas in 1915, where she died quietly on June 13, 1933, at the age of 46. 5. Grady Stiles, the Lobster Boy Grady Stiles Jr. is an outlier among human marvels. According to many witnesses, this teratological terror was every bit the monster he appeared to be. For over a century, the Stiles family had suffered from ectrodactyly, also known as lobster claw syndrome. It is a rare congenital hand deformity in which the middle digit is missing, and the hand is cleft where the finger's metacarpal should be. Although cases vary in severity, this split frequently gives the hands the appearance of lobster claws. This condition frequently affects both the hands and feet, and while it is inherited, it can skip a generation. In 1805, William Stiles was apparently the first in the family to exhibit the condition. Grady Sr. was followed by Jacob Stiles, Elisha Stiles, and Grady Stiles' sister Grady Franklin Stiles Jr. The Lobster Boy was a sideshow attraction, and when he was born in Pittsburgh on July 18, 1937, his father added him to the show at a young age. Grady's condition was critical, and he couldn't walk. He learned to move by using his hands and arms, and as a result, he developed incredible upper body strength. He had two marriages and four children. Two of those children, Kathy, a girl, and Grady III, a boy, were born with ectrodactyly variations. Despite having different mothers, the siblings occasionally toured as the lobster family. 4. Martin Lorello, the Human Owl Martin Joe Larejo, also known as the man with the revolving head, the human owl, and Bobby, the boy with the revolving head, 
was born in Nuremberg, Germany in May 1885. He was born with a crooked spine that allowed him to tilt his head 180 degrees. When he turned his head, his spine formed the shape of a question mark. In 1921, he immigrated to the United States from Germany and began performing with sideshows such as Ripley's Believe It or Not, Ringling Brothers, and Barnum and Bailey. He trained dogs to do gymnastics in addition to rotating his head. Lorello couldn't breathe when he turned his head around, but he could drink. He had performed at numerous of Robert Ripley's auditorium during the 1930s and died at the age of 70 of a heart attack and was cremated. 3. Madame Gustica Madame Gustica performed in freak shows. She was famous for having extended lips, which was regarded exceedingly unusual at the time. Her renown is based on an image shot on April 12, 1930 of her smoking a pipe. She was able to expand her lips to roughly 8 inches apart from the rest of her mouth by inserting increasingly huge discs between her gums and lips. While experts don't know much else about her, they are positive she appeared in a freak show, most likely on Coney Island. This was perhaps the first time audiences had seen someone born in Africa and raised in a completely African milieu. People were not used to seeing such people back then. Thus, her initial appearance in the United States sparked a lot of excitement. 2. Millie and Christine McCoy Millie and Christine McCoy were conjoined twins born on July 11, 1851, in Columbus County, North Carolina, to slave parents Jacob and Monemia, who belonged to blacksmith Jabez McKay. The McCoy twins attracted attention and scrutiny from the minute they were born. The sisters were joined at the lower spine and shared one pelvis, but each sister had her own two limbs and legs. In adulthood, they referred to themselves as Millie Christine, a single person. The twins owner allegedly sold them for $1,000 to a showman interested in displaying them in freak show circuses. They finally ended up in the possession of another individual, Joseph Pearson Smith, who was thought to be a wealthy trader. The girls were known as Millie and Christine Smith while in Smith's care. Their owner hired them out to other touring shows. During the same year, a showman responsible with displaying the sisters abducted them from Smith and transported them to a private exhibition where they were discreetly presented to scientific groups and inspected by physicians. After nearly three years away from their legal owner, the twins were sold to another showman who displayed them in a museum in Philadelphia. They were quickly relocated to England. Millie and Christine were no longer slaves after the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, but they chose to stay with the Smiths and continue to perform at the circus as a singing pair rather than sideshow attraction. 1. Fedor Jeftichu, Joe Jothe Dogface Fedor Jeftichu had hypertrichosis, a rare disease. He rose to prominence in the 19th century as a circus freak, displaying his unusual condition to the public. The show's producer even made the poor boy growl, earning him the moniker Joe Joe the Dog-Faced Boy in the media. The various causes of the rare genetic disease hypertrichosis are now well understood and range from hormonal disruption to nervous system malfunction, but there was no explanation for it in the 19th century. More precisely, there was atavism, or reversion to an ancestral form, according to which hairy people were more like animals. Such people were dubbed dog people because their entire face, neck, shoulders, and back were frequently covered in hair. It's sad to see how these circus promoters took advantage of these people. On the other hand, many of these people were unable to work, and the circus put food on the table. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thanks for watching and see you next time.